Hey there, welcome back to another video. Unit Sharper is here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can let your users know how they can use your application to do specific things. All right, so let's get started. So here I'm having an application. I'm having an empty application here or an empty activity. And now let's try to add the library we want to use. The library is called Top Target View. Okay, it contains five case stars here on the GitHub. And here is the main thing that the application will let you do. It will let you create an animation for the views and you can add titles and descriptions so the users can see the main important things. Okay, so they can know that this button is for search, this one is to launch process and so on. Okay, to implement this kind of thing, well, first of all, you have to add the Maven Central Repository and to add this dependency. Okay, the dependency here is 1.13.3. Okay, so let's add it. Let's go back, project, and build a Gradle file here. We'll add it at the bottom here. Paste 1.13.3. Sync the project. Now, if you go to the, to the activity here, I'm having just simple button and flirt in action button. You can use it with any layout you have. I'm using straightforward XML. I'm not using any data binding or Jetpack Compose just for the sake for sharing what we can do with this library. So let's get started. In the tutorial, they are sharing this one. They can use this long thing and also a sequence. The idea of a sequence that you can use, you can show many animations. When the user click on a button, you show immediately the other animation for the other button or other view, okay? I'm going to show for this, tap target view, or let's see the sequence. So the first thing you need to do is create a tab target sequence like that, and the sequence can contain only one also, and the target sequence like that. This, this refers to the activity. So if you are using this top target sequence in a fragment, you can use it with require activity, but you provide an activity. And here, we are going to set the target. There is two targets, target and target with S. I'm going to choose only one target. And for the target, to provide a good target here, uh, you must provide top target view for the, this one. Now here, you must add the view. I'm going to use just simple find view by ID. By ID, we can use I don't know, we can use data binding or Jetpack Compose or anything, but I'm just showing the example for the top target sequence. And here, let's tap r.id. Let, let me give some IDs. Button, and we have the add button. Let's name it the add. Okay, now here, just let me put hello button here and I'm going to give it a title. Okay, I'm going to give it a title. The title is click here to start. Okay, you can also give it a description like in order, in order to do blah blah blah, a long description. I mean, and here you go. This is the first thing after setting the target. Well, you can immediately start it. This thing you can start showing it. We can run it to see. So here is the animation that is showing. As you can see, it is showing click here to start and in order, blah, blah, blah. This is the description and this is the title, okay? And this is the view. As you can see, there is some problem with the view here. So we must add something for this. To disable this color thing, you know, the view, we have to add the following. Well, let me just add some bricks here. For the view, you must add tint the target to false. Okay, don't tint the target with any color. If you run it again, you will see the main color and the button. Okay, now if you click here, it won't click the button. It will disable or dismiss the ripple effect or the animation. Okay, so we want some kind of listener, listener that will tell us if the target was clicked or not. So let's add this listener. We we'll are just simple listener, and here we create an object, an anonymous object for top sequence dot listener, and let's implement it. 
It contains three methods. These methods are on sequence finish, on sequence step, and on sequence cancel. All right. So this will be invoked when all the sequence has been terminated. Okay. This will be invoked if any of the views here. We can add multiple views here if any of the views was cancelled. What do we mean by cancel? By cancel, I mean the following. Well, first, let's do this and let's add simple log things. Okay, let's replace that with tag and right. If we click on the hello world, on the hello world, it will show on sequence step and finish. Okay, but now if we click outside the animation, let's say we click here, it will show cancel. It will show cancel. So this callback will let you know whether your target was clicked or not. So let's add another, let's add another target. Okay. I will add the S here for targets and let's copy basically just that. Another target. Now the target is the add button and click here to add something. And in this description, add blah, blah, blah. Okay, don't take the target. There is multiple things you can do. Description color, it is cancelable or not. So you can set if something is cancelable or not. You can set the target radius for the ripple effect or for the animation effect. Well, you can play with this. There is this interesting thing, which is an ID. The ID of the top target. Well, you can give it something like that. Okay. How you can use that ID? Well, in each sequence step, how you can know which step has been passed or not. So you get this thing that the target has been clicked. That's the first thing. And you want to know which target. If you try to use the last target, there is some things here you can use the ID. Okay. But this ID, it's is not this view ID. Is the ID for the top target. So you have to set an ID here to use it later. Okay, I will just print the ID here so you can know it like that. We set an ID for O15 for the second and for the for the first one we didn't set any ID. If you don't, if you don't set any ID, it will show minus one. Okay, so it will show a hello world, and when you click on hello world, it will show for the add button. Okay, and if you click here, it will go, it will finish. Okay, if you go to the callbacks here, you will see on sequence step minus one because for this top target, it is, we didn't set any ID. For the second one, it is 15, so it show 15. And finally, it finishes everything. It, finish, it finishes the flow. Now, this code is chaos. As you can see, how you can fit this into a real world application. Okay, so somehow you have to, we, we have to clean this thing up. Okay, so the first thing is I can see this one. I can basically create a function that will create for me top targets. Okay, so let's refactor this. I'm going to use refactor and extract function. Okay, let's call it create top or let's create targets. Okay, let's abstract things. Okay, and here in this create target, we want to add some parameters. All right, so for the parameters, let's make them general. Well, we have a title, of course, the title of string, and let's say description of string. And also, if you use an ID, well, let's give it an ID also. It's an int. By default, it would be my screen. Okay, so if we don't set it, and we need this view. Here, you have to make the decision. If you are going to use find view by ID, well, you can just pass the ID. Otherwise, you must pass all the view. I think I'm going to pass all the view because I'm going to change this find view by ID to be with something else. Okay, so I'm going to show you like that. And basically, I can pass, import it, and I can pass all these parameters. Delete that here, put it here, and now, if you take the view, the title, and the description, and also the ID. Okay, so this function can be used to create top targets. Okay, we delete that. Or we can create create target, and we pass this 
directly and yeah good one okay so this is the first thing in order to create the targets all right now we have this top target sequence where we can also extract all this process and thanks to kotlin lambda expressions we can also pass a reference on what's what's to execute at each step or when the sequence has been finished all right so let's extract all this i'm going to create another function simply i'm going to create it private for now but later on i'm going to extract it to an extension function so we can use it in all our system private fun create target sequence like that and simply i'm going to copy all of this now here will be passed some views okay so we delete that and let's pass list of views or var arcs of views var arcs var arcs and we will pass it here okay you have just to list like that and here in the listener as you can see this is horrible this is chaos we will just add some callbacks okay so we'll pass function completely a function let's declare a function let's call it i don't know on finish okay and it will be of type lambda like that it will take nothing and it will return unit by default it won't do anything okay same thing i'm going to use another function to make it cancel on cancel and it will do nothing here i'm going to delete this on finish here on cancel and basically if you want something here you can also do it i'm not going to use it here and here we go now we can replace all of this all of this with our new function so create Let's not let's rename it. It's not create. It shows show target sequence. It will create and show. Okay. Show target sequence like that. We will just pass this to and on let's say on finish when all the flow finishes. So basically you can delete all of that. And you have something clean somehow. It is clean and maintainable. Okay. Basically, it will work the same. Let's assure that it is working correctly. Where it is, first one, second one, and we must see an event on create finish. Great. This is great. Okay. Now you have somehow an abstract thing that you can work on. You can use this function. You can extract them into a separate file that you can use these two functions in all your application, in all yes, your application with your activities, other activities, and other fragments. Okay. So you can go here, create an extension function. Let's create a Kotlin class, Kotlin file called extensions, like that. Paste these two functions. So the first one, they are not private by right now. Ah, we have an error. We made an error. Ah, this, this I told you before, this is an activity. Okay, so we must pass the instance of an activity. Activity, no, it's just an activity like that, and pass it. Okay, I forgot to tell you about that. And here, let's try to use it. We need the first one to be this. Okay, so this will work correct. As you can know, we don't have something hard coded here that tell us to use tab target. Okay, so this is somehow independent of tab target. It's not fully independent. But it is independent. If you can see here, we don't have any import for that, so we are fine. You can use something like the design pattern for the, I think, for yes, for the adapter design pattern to completely decouple. But what we are doing here, we are decoupling our framework, the framework we are using, the top target framework from our application. Why we are doing such a thing? Because maybe in the future, one day, we will be told to replace this top target activity or this top target framework with another framework. There is another framework I think called material top target. Top target font here it is. It will do just the same. It has 1.5 Ks. It will do just the same. But its interface is 
different from the one you are using. So maybe we will decide to use this in the future. If you want to have a full flexibility of your application, what we want, the ideal behavior from us is to don't replace any of this. We will let all of this work in correctly and we will try to replace on simpler classes. Here in this example, we can change only in, on these two functions. So instead of passing top target, we will replace it with something else. And instead of creating top target for you, we will create the top target with another mechanism. Okay? So if you want to use the adapter behavior in this example, you have to create an adapter for each framework you are using. Okay? So we have to abstract the concept of top target from our application first and then use an adapter to make it work for this frame. And if we try to use another framework, we'll create another adapter for this specific framework and we will let it work, okay? So this is how you can achieve somehow a clean implementation. This is somehow clean, it's not 100% clean, but this will work fine for the moment. And if you try to change it for another framework, it will work fine also. So if you want to see the adapter example, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to do that for you. And don't forget to subscribe for this channel. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video.